It's garden tour time, and definitely prepare yourself for a really big mess. <coughs> so we start our tour with Chris hard at work, planting some celery very for fall. Late, very, very, very late. Very this late. Not stock celery, it's just for, um, it's like a soup celery type celery, so. Yeah, we'll so see they're, how they're still looking pretty healthy. They've been in the greenhouse for quite some time. Two of them have been out here for a bit and they seem to be doing quite well. So Yes, so... Filling in the gaps between the onions. Yeah. The onions we again got out late. Some are doing great, some are not, but uh, that's a different video entirely. But first stop on the tour, celery and onion buckets. Second stop on the tour right next to those buckets is my potato buckets. Now, obviously this is not all of our potatoes, but these are potatoes that we planted to eat over the summertime. And as you can see, we have full dye back on the uh, greens on those. They blossomed, it was beautiful. So now we just need to see what's in those buckets. But that again is another video. So that my friends was probably the neatest and tidiest part of this whole tour that you're going to see. Because believe me, we've let things slide a little, but impressively so, it's all still producing. I'm going to start back here just to give you guys a little bit of a taste of just what we're looking at here. It's a jungle. Uh, we have a lot of things going to seed, a lot of wild weeds, a lot of dill and kale and all that good stuff. But it is packed in there, buried amongst grasses and burdock and who knows what else you can find in this deep jungle. But like I said, still producing. For example, right here, we have our, I'm going to say this wrong, Ferrozone Paprika Peppers, which we uh, received through the uh, Canadian Seed Exchange, and uh, they are doing amazing, so looking forward to some smoked paprika as these uh, start to turn. And we have our curled dwarf scotch kale, doing amazing. Almost too big to be uh, human eating at this point. We do pick it for the rabbits, uh, but we have some other sections that have the dwarf kale. The jungle of dill, which needs to be harvested and put into uh, containers because it is dried and pretty much that's all it's going to be good for at the moment. And as I mentioned, we have a lot of things going to seed. All our early lettuces, uh, you know, they bolted finally and we have a lot of seed coming. We did have a few really good storms, and as you can see, we've kind of had a few breakages, but they still seem to be producing this seed, which is great. And uh, we're not too far off now from being able to take this in and uh, start getting some of these seeds out of here. Next to the greenhouse here, we have, uh, so that lettuce that you just saw there that's going to seed was our prize head. And then what we have here is our red romaine. And again, we're going to get tons of seed off of that. And we also ate tons of lettuce. Uh, we're finding now as our heat has set in, we've been having 33 days that feel like 40 degree temperatures. Uh, we're not able to get the lettuce to grow at this point in time, but lucky for us, the kale really is carrying us through these hot months. But we've got some Alma peppers here. Uh, we already harvested a bunch of these, so we're going to be trying some paprika from them as well. As you can see, some of them doing quite well. This area gets a nice afternoon shade. Again, some more kale plants chucked in here or there. Over on this side, we have our butter crunch lettuce. Again, going to seed after uh, finally bolting. This, we were able to use this lettuce for months. But as you can see now, it's basically for seed only. Another thing that we have over here that we are working on getting the seed from is our cilantro slash coriander. And hopefully, hopefully, I can get these seeds off of here before they fall off, because I'm always too late. Um, so hopefully we can get some fresh seed for this. We've also got some more coriander started in the greenhouse and in the grow room, so that uh, once this heat dissipates and we have some decent temperatures again, we're going to restock what's kind of going on out here. Pull out some of these lettuces and replace them. Looking towards the barn, we have a very sad looking bean trellis. That was our yellow beans. Um, and to be honest, they're, I'm gonna say they had a few setbacks. We had some of that kale that went to seed and lettuce and it really shaded them out at the beginning and then it's been so dry and 
that's one thing we're learning as we're going here with these raised beds is the amount of watering that they require when they have a lot of plants in them. As you can see, we've got a whole bunch more kale right in the center here. We've got red Russian on the one side and we've got our dwarf curled scotch on this side. Looking to that way, we've got some rogue cherry tomatoes from last year that we've allowed to grow because they're fine distance from anything else, so we're not going to see any crossing. Right here we have amazing, <laughs> these are our lemon drop peppers, which we received in the uh, Canadian Seed Exchange. I'm going to see if I can find some in here, just to show you. There's some. See, they're these little, these little peppers here. And I'll tell you what, I picked two of them today for our taco salad meat. They've got some punch, so we're not sure if it's for us because they are pretty spicy, but growing amazing, even in the conditions that we've had and the heat and the dryness. So definitely can't say enough good about the uh, ability of the plant, just not sure if the pepper is for us. And as we move around from those, we get to our Kajari melons, one of our favorite things. And to be honest, some years have been great, other years not so much. This year, if I can get in here, they are loaded with fruit. We've got two there. There was the one that was hanging at the top. Another one there. We've got one, let's see, one in there. And there's lots of little fruits coming on the vines. So as long as we can keep this watered, which we have been trying to do, we should see some pretty decent results from this. One thing we do find with the Kajari melons though is they ripen really, really fast. So you really gotta keep your eye on them, especially when you've got some serious heat. More kale. But we're loving the kale for in the heat of the summer. It's something that we definitely uh, can't suggest enough or recommend enough to people is having that kale. Uh, we do keep multiple varieties because as you can see here, red Russian kale getting eaten by bugs. Dwarf curled scotch kale, not so much, but some years it's the other way around, so it just depends how things go. As I stand back here, I'm not sure how many of you will remember from last year during our garden tour, our cherry tomatoes were completely out of control. They were up and over the trellis, eight feet tall. We planted both sides with four. It was way too much, way too much on the cherry tomato front. So this year, we planted three on one side of the trellis, and we put them in a shady spot. And you know what? It's so enjoyable. They're just kind of coming off at a nice pace that we can just pick them all as we need them. As you can see, there's plenty, plenty more coming. So super pleased with how the cherry tomatoes are going. These are uh, Gray's Sweet Cherry. Wonderful, wonderful flavor. And they stay that really nice little small. Love it. This is the side that I kind of debated on whether to show or not, but this is what has happened. There you can see there's some romaine lettuce in that bed. That's all that even got planted in there this year because it was so full of weeds. Um, but the romaine is going to seed, which is nice. At the back, way over there, we've got um, our early golden raspberries. They did amazing this year, but as you can see, we have to traipse through a lot of weeds to get to them. Blue barrels with all the herbs and sweet potatoes are doing fantastic. They are loving this heat and loving being able to hold the water. The greens and the sweet potatoes are just going like mad now. So I think we, we planted everything, all our sweet potatoes in these blue buckets this year because last year we had amazing results from the buckets. And that's what we decided to try and stick with. Basil, we have lots of basil, more basil to come. But uh, I've been harvesting some of this. We also need fresh seed this year, so I am letting some go to seed, but I'm thinking now I should probably cut some more off because I don't want that much going to seed. Uh, one thing that's nice with basil and with all other herbs, if you uh, take it and pinch that bit off the end, it just branches out and goes more. So you can cut it back and it'll keep on a growing. Parsley, another herb that we definitely grow a lot of. Uh, I only did the uh, curled parsley this year because that's my favorite one. I find I get a lot more product or bang for my buck, if you will. More sweet potatoes, more parsley. Sweet potatoes are kind of growing up and drowning the parsley. This we're not going to talk about because it's not supposed to be there. 
lettuce on the ground in a bucket waiting to be planted. It's looking really good though, so we've got to get that in. Uh, we've kind of been trying to acclimatize it because it's been hot and dry. More dill. I really should have harvested more dill when uh, I did earlier in the spring. It's now beyond for the, for the dill weed. It's nice to have the dill weed, right? But we've got lots of cucumbers. Well, lots for us. I mean, we're not very good cucumber growers. I've never been successful at growing a lot of cucumbers. And I think next year we're just going to put them right in the ground. Uh, we've always done it in the raised beds. And I have a feeling they just dry out a little bit too much. This is a little bit unfortunate. I'm a little sad about this. Again, this bed got very, very dry. But these are our yellow pear tomatoes. And this year we planted four instead of just one. Last year it was our single seed challenge. And we tried the yellow pear and absolutely loved this tomato. Uh, it's fantastic dehydrated. It kind of goes really, really sweet. And it's wonderful on pizza. But as you can see, we are losing these plants. They are dying back. I'm pretty sure this is probably some kind of blight or some sort of thing. Um, but... Either way, they're covered in fruit, which is going to be great because we'll have lots to dehydrate and use. I actually just took a whole bowl inside to put into the dehydrator tonight. But uh, plenty more to come, and some of the plant is still struggling to keep going. So hopefully, uh, you know, whatever was bothering it is gone because the tops all look pretty good. More basil that's really in need of being watered. That's been an ongoing problem for us in these raised beds. Watering. I think... Our, these are our rattlesnake beans. Loving this. They are producing like crazy. Um, I believe they can be eaten as green as well, but we are keeping these for dried at this point. I'm going to try a couple probably green, but for the most part we want these for a dry bean. They're uh, attempting to go up and over the trellis. They're not quite as dense and thick as the beans were last year, but they still got more time to go. Our red fife wheat is looking amazing. This little patch here was actually just put in for propagation purposes. Uh, all we wanted was to renew our seeds and hopefully have a bit more to try and do a bigger patch next year. And I think we're gonna get that. It's done very, very well. We haven't had any vole issues or anything with it. So fingers crossed we can get this off and harvested for next year to do a decent sized patch at least. I mean, by no means are we gonna be feeding ourselves, but it's a start. And so we enter the really bad jungle, like really bad. This area, as much as we have the best of intentions, is wild, just wild. So we have kale everywhere and it's just going, going, going. I mean, we can't even eat it all. As hard as it is to believe, I did tie up these tomatoes. They got so top heavy, they've all flopped. I'm gonna have to get in there and be ruthless and tie them up again. These are my San Marzanos. Uh, it's kind of a funny thing because, you know, let me just step over this. There you can see, look at the, they just flopped. They're so heavy with fruit. The funny thing is this year, oh my goodness, look at all the red ones. Hang on, I'll show you. Let's see if I can get in there. <gasps> Look! I guess I better start watching these tomatoes a bit better. Huh. Oh boy, there's some over there too. I guess we'll be harvesting tomatoes sooner than I thought. Oh boy, there's more in there. Look at that. So it is kind of a funny story. We decided less is more. And this year, instead of planting 38 San Marzanos, I planted 18 San Marzanos and I did nine per trellis, where last year I did 18 per trellis. Um, and I think I still had a few left over. And let me tell you, less is definitely more because I think I have four times the fruit on my 18 than I had on all 38 last year. So as much as I thought I wasn't going to be making a whole lot of tomato product this year, I think I'm going to be because wait till you see what our Scotia tomatoes are doing. It's actually quite funny because I haven't been out here in maybe three days. I know that sounds really bad, but we've just been doing other things. And I'm zooming in here on the Scotia tomatoes and I see red ones over there too. Oh my goodness, I'm going to be so overwhelmed with canning. But again, we planted less, spaced them out. And whether it's the fact that the year has been amazing or what, I don't know. But they are absolutely drowning in fruit. 
again buried in ragweed over there you can see all the tall weeds here we have our peanuts which I've been trying really 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 hard to keep them weeded out but as you can see we've got some amaranth in there ah, stuff's just getting ahead of us potatoes we've got uh, in here are all blue potatoes so we've got from down there coming in front of me in a T from that row that I just showed you and right here is something that we are super excited about. Now, uh, you just saw those onions that were planted in the blue barrels, and they are doing pretty sad. Well, these are the same batch of onions, and look at the ones in the ground. These are our Walla Walla onions, and I'll tell you what, I think we're going to be sticking with these. We need to tweak it and do a little bit more learning on how to grow our onions, but boy, oh boy, they are doing wow. At least for us, anyways, for onions. And over there are Black Prince tomatoes. And again, we decided with these tomatoes that less is more. So we only planted two, where normally we plant like six or eight. But look at the good, healthy fruit on these. It's not turning color yet, but look at the tomatoes. Look at them. That's just one little area on these. There's, there's another, just loaded. So we're learning quite quickly after like 10 years of planting tomatoes that they actually do like to be spread out. Who knew? Look at that! I'm walking back to show you my cabbages that we're about to harvest and look at that! More tomatoes on my San Marzano's looking amazing. Look at, look at the size of it. That right there is a beautiful paste tomato. Super excited. Amongst all these wonderful weeds is we had two rows of our Amish snap peas. Now I've already pulled everything out of the one row here. You can see um, we harvested the dry ones. We put quite a few bags in the freezer of um, fresh ones, frozen but fresh. And uh, we've also harvested a couple bowls of dried which we are going to be replanting this fall to get another batch for in the freezer. But also, uh, we can use these for like split pea and ham soup. So here I've got my red mangle fodder beets that we are growing for the rabbits. Now, if I can get in here and show you, they are doing actually surprisingly well. We, we almost thought we weren't going to get anything this year from them. But you can see there, I mean, there's my hand. It, they're doing well. They're a little bit crowded. So I'm not sure how big they're going to get, but all in all, not a write-off. More kale. <laughs> we grow a lot of kale. It's uh, full of weeds, but mostly this is for rabbits. Um, once it gets to this size, I find, especially with the red Russian kale, if you peel off all the bigger leaves for rabbits, they tend to sprout lots of little leaves, which are really, really nice for salads. But most of the big leaves are now to that point that they're just bug-eaten and horrible. So the rabbits love them. I do apologize, this tour is getting long, and I'm like only halfway, but hopefully I can wrap it up quickly here. But these are our Palestine, Palestine, again, I'll write it down on the bottom. And uh, we crowded these, which we probably shouldn't have, but look at them. They are doing incredible as well. Look at this gorgeous, gorgeous tomato right there. They are wonderful. You can use them as a slicer or as a paste tomato because they're really, really thick but they all are just gorgeous big tomatoes. I think the one I took off the other day was almost two pounds. Cabbage, uh, not doing fantastic. There's one there that's trying. I don't know if this one's trying. Let's see here. Oh yeah, he's, he's trying. There's getting attacked by the bugs pretty good, but we do have two of them down here that are doing absolutely gorgeous and the wonderful Christopher is about to cut those out for us. Time to harvest them. Time to harvest and make some sauerkraut for you. Yeah. Now that's the smaller of the two. I think some of the outer leaves will go to bunnies. But yeah, outer leaves to rabbits, yeah, but the main action. part of it is about and the size of my hand. Pretty good. I mean, we, we don't have a lot of success with cabbage. This one here is a gorgeous, gorgeous cabbage. Look at that. Dude. Oh, sheep heard me. Sheep heard me. Look at that beauty. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous cabbage there. 
it's probably, I don't know how much that's going to weigh, but it's big. So we're going to try and grow some more in the fall. We've got uh, some planted. We'll see what happens. Because um, these just did get quite bug riddled. And uh, as you can see with this one that Chris has taken to the sheep now, they just didn't develop into a ball. Nope. They didn't stay tight. So fine. they're great animal food though. This part of the tour, we're going to start kind of wrapping it up quickly here because as you can hear all the animals want their chores done so they get their dinner but here we have our white thomasal tomatoes again just loaded with fruit less is more we went with less on a trellis gave them more space and boy oh boy are they producing some fruit some more beans here just doing amazing on this uh, little piece of trellis here covered i forget which ones these are but covered with beans, these ones are for drying, so uh, this is great because we needed some developed pretty quick. Hot Hungarian peppers. I've been using a few of these, but for the most part, well, okay, some of them are getting trampled, but for the most part, these are doing really well. I've got a few really hot red ones, but most of them are nice black ones, great for salsas, that sort of thing. Deep buried in the weeds, we have a whole bunch more red mango beets for fodder. Again, hopefully they're doing well in there. It's been a time-consuming battle on weeds this year because of the amount of rain we had. Here we have some yellow crookneck squash. It's uh, slowly coming. We've got a few little fruits starting, but uh, as uh, most of you will recall, our squash was fighting its own battle with bugs. And I think in the end we won, but it's all behind now. So we'll have to see how quickly we start getting stuff. Over here, these ones I have not gotten around to tying up very well yet. I started but didn't get very far. But these are our pineapple tomatoes and usually they're earlier than our other tomatoes. But for some reason they're behind this year. So that's the way it goes. And here outside the barn we have our garlic patch which I'm going to say it. We're now approaching more than 60% dieback. These need to be pulled. They need to be harvested. So that's on the agenda for one day this week. Um, unfortunately, well, the last three days have felt like 40 degrees and tomorrow's going to be equally as hot. But fingers crossed we will get some sort of storm to break this and hopefully uh, get this harvested in the next uh, evening or two. I'm going to wrap up the tour from here. Over there we have our new for 22 garden. You can see the beans are growing beautifully up our trellises, which we're so pleased about. We've got two trellises over there that are full of beans, which is great. Along with uh, a bunch of soybeans and most of our potatoes. So it is going to be a good year. You can just see the tops of the sorghum there. Oh boy, I forgot a whole other garden. Oh well. As I said, I forgot a whole other garden. The peppers, the uh, corn and the squash are all in another garden. And you know what? We're getting late. We need to get to chores. So I'm gonna share that garden with you on the next tour. So stay tuned for that. But as you can see, we live in a jungle and it still seems to produce food. There's definitely ways that we could improve, but for now, we're just gonna go with it and not worry too terribly much.